All right, Team Scritch, welcome back to Scritch is Going Wild channel. So I'm still sitting here with my good buddy, Pinch. And as we were talking, he, he loves the interviews on my YouTube channel. And he's like, but nobody's interviewed you. So he's like, hey, I want to ask you a couple questions. I said, that's great. So um, I'm going to turn it over to him. So I guess my first question is, is, is there anything out here that has humbled you and has changed the way you think about your life to this point in your journey? So, um, yeah, I think one of the big things that comes to mind, when you carry everything on your back that you need, literally, for, we've been out here since March 30th, so I've been, I've been carrying everything I need. I carry my, my shelter, I carry, we carry our sleeping gear, we carry our food. You know, you carry what's going to keep you warm. You keep what what's going to keep you dry. You carry your all your gear to filter your water. Um, it really shows you how much material, how how much materialistic things I have in my house that are just a luxury, and I don't need and I could live without. And I've seen this throughout my career, especially in the Navy, because we would pull into like third world countries and stuff like that and you'd see how these people live and then I go home and I would live in this luxurious house maybe not by other people's standards in the United States by by standards in these third world countries and so I think that would be the big thing also um, I consider myself to be in fairly decent shape and I knew I wasn't in the trail shape but it kind of surprised me how long it took me to get trail hard what we call trail hard out here means your body's just used to walking on rocks walking uphill and your legs are strong so those are the two real big things that come to mind okay um so next question so as i mentioned in the previous video get in the right frame of mind um you know i know i struggled coming out here but i know you guys get on and off the trail sometimes for two weeks for your mission trip yeah you know sometimes for this uh Past weekend, you were in town visiting. So how do you get your mind back to where it needs to be to be able to finish this? Because it's a challenge every day. Yeah. Um, so I think for me, it's just a matter of when I think about what I could be doing instead of this, I know if I was doing that, I would be thinking about I should be on the trail. Part of that is getting up. And I'll tell you, my hardest time is getting up in the morning because I'm just like, oh man, I got to put this pack on and I'm going to walk. It's almost like getting up in the morning, you don't feel like going to the gym and working yeah. out. You're just like, oh, I'll just take today off, right? But you get up, you go to the gym, you feel good. So that's how I feel at the end of the day. Um, and part, some, some days it's just a matter of saying, I'm just putting one foot in front of the other because this is a goal of mine and I want to finish and so I'm just going to keep doing that until I get there. Right. And some days it's as simple as that, as get up, pack up the gear, put the pack on. I'm not going fast. My body's like, I don't, I don't want to go fast today. But you just say, okay, that's fine. We're not going to go fast because you always listen to your body while you're out here, yeah. but you just keep going. So I just got to do one more question because I know probably at the end of this, you have a nice video, but um, is there anything you would do different or change next time you decide to do something big and ambitious? Different or change? Whether it has pertained with the trail, whether you would go a different direction. So I don't know how many people know this, but we get, I get asked the question a lot, what'd you do to prepare? And <laughs> So we went to Florida and took three cruises and went camping in the Everglades. Um, I wish I was in a little better shape when I got on the trail to begin with. Uh, so that way I could have gotten more miles in in the beginning. Uh, but the big thing is, like I said, you listen to your body. So I would say that is one of the things. Um, and then understanding I didn't understand how long it was going to take my body to get what we call trail hard. It probably took me two and a half months. I think some people get there in a month. I was thinking 30 days, I'll be ready, I'll be getting it, I'll be just be like yep. It probably took took me and Golden Goddess about two and a half months before we got to that part point where we felt like, yep, let's throw the packs on, we're feeling strong, let's go. 
Uh, not that we weren't at other times, but on a consistent daily basis. Right. So the more I'm out here, the more I understand my body and how my body is going to react to certain things. And so where sometimes things will scare some people because some people like me, you don't have a bowel movement for four <laughs> days. But I know that about me, so it didn't bother me. Some people get out here and if something like that happens, they, they get really worried. Um, other people don't have that issue at all. So it's just kind of knowing your body and knowing those things. But yeah, I think the big thing was just the preparation. Mentally, we were prepared. We were prepared as far as logistics go. What do we need? What do we need in our pack? How are we getting there? All that stuff came together. But physically, I don't think we probably spent enough time getting in shape for lack of a better term so for instance my knee was out of alignment I didn't know this so I had knee pain for the first 550 miles and I just kept plugging along and downhill was extremely painful and I was living on naproxen and aspartame, which you could, which is a pain reliever a topical pain reliever and I saw a, a doctor in Damascus and he told me, he said, another two to 300 miles, you won't have any knee pain. And he also gave me some exercises and some strengthening to do. So I was like, okay, well, that's great. And the, the knee pain wasn't as bad. It got better over time. But what he was saying is my muscles were going to strengthen up enough to keep my knee in alignment so I wouldn't have that kind of knee pain. And it was about 50 miles later, about mile 550. I have not had pain since mile 550. And that was a, a serious blessing because going down hills and your knee hurts every time you crunch, crunch, crunch on the rocks and stuff was, was really big. So I guess the other thing I wish I had known and understood, and I probably need to do some videos about this, is kind of the knee pain in the foot pain that you'll experience while you're out here because nobody really talks about that in their videos a whole lot they talk about the blisters and i'm not talking about blisters but when you're walking on those rocks you just get your feet get tender and one of my buddies slow and steady paul when i interviewed him his advice was walk on legos before you get out here <laughs> i don't know how much good that would help because my my feet still get tender if i'm walking on a lot of rocks all day so I guess those are the couple of things, the physical preparation and then understanding the pain because I have not met one person out here that hasn't had some kind of pain and it's usually in the knees or the legs. Um, lots of shin splints, so I'm, I feel very blessed I haven't had that. Yeah. So that's all I have, JR. Okay. Um, you know, you do your thing. All right. Thanks, Craig. I appreciate it. No thanks for being here. Love you, man. Yeah, thanks for having me. Of course. And... You guys, say your prayers, stay positive, do something good for somebody, have a glass of wine for me. Until next time. Uh, Scritch is out, and do, do yourself a favor. Take a challenge, go do something for yourself. Scritch, Scritch is out, and pinch out. <laughs>